Our next inductee is George Gunt II. Well remembered today as the founder of the George Gund Foundation, the contributions of time and consul in his lifetime are as much an enduring legacy of George Gund as his financial support. Mr. Gund was born in La Crosse, Wisconsin, but moved to Cleveland with his family in 1897. He studied at Harvard College, Harvard Business School, and Iowa State University. Throughout his lifetime, his career included banking, real estate, animal husbandry, and ranching. He also served in Army intelligence during World War I. In 1936, he married Jessica Rossler and settled in Cleveland to raise a family. In 1937, Mr. Gunn established a charitable giving program which greatly impacted the various educational and cultural institutions to which he devoted his time and resources. He became president of the Cleveland Trust Company in 1941, then the 18th largest bank in America. As president, he was a significant investor and director of some of the country's leading corporations. In 1952, the George Gunn Foundation was established and utilized a corporate foundation structure to provide creative solutions to social issues through the thorough review of proposals and disbursement of funds. Throughout his life, Mr. Gund was especially devoted to the arts. The George Gund Endowment Fund at CPH was established in 1948, the revenue from which was used for CPH's Visiting Artists Fund. He was a member of the Cleveland Playhouse Board from 1949 to 1966, and the Cleveland Playhouse Foundation Board from 1964 to 1966. He was president of the foundation at the time of his death in 1966. The impact of George Gunn's accomplishments and philanthropic endeavors are still felt today by the Cleveland Playhouse and the multitude of organizations who have benefited from his foresight, business acumen, and generosity. He also loved Cleveland, and he thought the Cleveland Playhouse was such an important part of the cultural life in Cleveland. He often talked about the Cleveland Playhouse and how proud he was to serve on their board and later the foundation board. I have a passion for theater for as long as I can remember. What started as an introduction to the theater with the Cleveland Playhouse curtain pullers continued with numerous productions in our backyard. My affiliation with the curtain pullers inspired me to both co-write and act in plays with friends. My father never missed any of our productions. As a young girl, I remember seeing plays with my father at both the Playhouse and the Hannah Theater. At the Hannah Theater, we saw many musicals from this magical place called Broadway. Theater has taught me a great deal about the world and myself. It helped shape to who I am. Three years ago, I saw a play that was part of the history cycle at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. I immediately thought it should go to Broadway. I went on to co-produce All the Way on Broadway, and it won the 2014 Tony for Best Play. I am so grateful to my father and to the Cleveland Playhouse for their respective roles in guiding me on my amazing theatrical journey. Most importantly, I am very pleased that the Cleveland Playhouse continues its remarkable work under the excellent leadership of Kevin Moore. Presenting the award for George Gunn II is David Stashauer, a good friend of mine and a former client of 
his advertising agency. David is literally Playhouse family. His mother having been the theater's first publicity director. In his own right, he has been a student, an actor, a trustee, and now serves on the Heritage Council. Both of us have reason to be grateful to George Gunn, as David will explain. David Stashoff. Some of the faithful here will remember that I've had the honor to present several Hall of Fame inductees. Now, usually these are people that I knew growing up at the Playhouse uh, who influenced the theater and my life. I cannot say that I was in the curtain pullers with George Gunn. <laughs> However, I did have the privilege to know him when I was younger, and he certainly influenced my life. Except for one story that you may not have heard, my acquaintance with Mr. Gunn had nothing to do with the theater. In 1958, I was assigned to write and produce the first television commercials for the Cleveland Trust Company. It was alleged that we had been hired because George Gunn wanted to prove to his friends at the Union Club that television would not work for his bank. <laughs> his reputation for austerity and conservatism were legendary. He was a formidable presence. I was petrified. <laughs> Contrary to expectation, Mr. Gunn took an interest in the television project. He also proved receptive to other new ideas, including Symphony at Seven, now in its 51st year on Mr. Conrad's radio station. So I had a number of occasions to see Mr. Gunn, never unpleasantly, although he was still a formidable presence and I never got over my stage fright. One afternoon, it must have been in the mid-1960s, I attended a civic reception. And I don't remember the reason for the occasion, but Mr. Gunn was there. Out of the blue, he said, Mr. Stashower, there's a piece of land at 18th and Euclid. What would you think if we bought it and moved the playhouse downtown? I was thunderstruck that he should ask my opinion of anything beyond Cleveland Trust's advertising. The full implications of the question didn't hit me until much later. I don't remember exactly what I replied. I'm pretty sure it was in the affirmative. <laughs> Not being active at the Playhouse at that time, I don't really know why Mr. Gunn's idea failed. In the following 30 years, as I continued to be responsible for the bank's advertising, I had frequent occasion to miss George Gunn. I eventually became a trustee of the Playhouse. I came on after Mrs. Estrada. I was present. I was present at the building of the Bolton. I went underground in the Reign of Terror. And resurfaced as an elder statesman in time for the move downtown. I have had frequent occasion to miss George Gunn. Today is another such occasion. Here we are, meeting a few yards from where Mr. Gunn thought we ought to be almost 50 years ago. He managed to remain an influence on the Playhouse that entire time. He remains a formidable presence. And so today, uh, his children remain a presence here in Cleveland, actively guided his vision through the Gunn Foundation. And so I'm happy to introduce Jeffrey Gunn.
First, I want to say how wonderful it is to be here, um, and especially to be here with some of the people who knew my father. And I'm not speaking of my good friend, Charlie Bolton, because he's a youngster. <laughs> I'm sitting next to Betty McKay, and she knew him through her work with the Schott Foundation, and Betty is 93. And so, along with Chloe Oldenburg and David, it's very nice to have this opportunity to speak um, and join in this celebration, which includes the induction of my father into the Cleveland Playhouse Hall of Fame. And thank you, David, for your introduction. You all know George Gund, and I should say right at the outset, George Gund, my father, never was George Gund the second until my brother, George Gunn III, died. I'm happy that he is that now, but it's new to me to hear him referred to as George Gunn II. Um, come with me on a little, and, and I really also want to say that I was so happy to hear my sister Louise's recollection of my father, and I won't um, go over his interest in the playhouse, which she brought to life. But come with me on a little trip down memory lane. Since you have me for a few minutes, I will briefly bring my father to life through my eyes. Good morning. The day would so often begin with my father coming into the room I shared with my brother Graham and simultaneously pulling up the shades on our windows as he said good morning. Look at the spider on the floor. That would be my greeting on my birthday, April 1st, <laughs> followed after a long pause with April Fool. <laughs> my father could be zesty. When the directors of Rockwell Industries in Pittsburgh, of which he was one, had to tell 86-year-old Colonel Rockwell, who had founded the company, that it was time for him to step down so his 56-year-old son could take over, they turned to my father as the director to do the job. He was willing to speak truth and take care of the task. My father knew Jack Kennedy before he became president. They were both on the Harvard Board of Overseers together. In 1959, my father had lunch with Senator Kennedy, who was 45 minutes late because, because he was talking to a union gathering. My father did not like it. I felt I understood Kennedy's action. However, the night of the day President Kennedy was shot in November of 1963, my father failed to go to a dinner he'd been invited to outside of Cleveland. More importantly, he did not even indicate he would be coming, would not be coming, which was singular in my knowledge of him. Though my father had his own prejudices, and yes, though he could be a formidable presence, as David just said, he was human at a deep level. Once in 1964, I was in his office at the Cleveland Trust Company when a letter came in from Kay Howley, a Clevelander, a longtime good friend, who was chairman of the Women's Committee of the Democratic Party, gently but firmly admonishing him to vote for Lyndon Johnson for president. My father called in his secretary and began, Dear Kay, you are such a peach. He never mentioned the subject at hand, but was effusive in Kay's praise. That same year, I wrote my father from college. I told him I would disown him if he voted for Goldwater for president. <laughs> he wrote me back and included a lengthy article praising Lyndon Johnson, underlining its source, which was Business Week. Of course, he went on to vote for Barry Goldwater. <laughs> he was conservative politically, but he was realistic and warm-hearted when it came to personal human relations. My father was himself a dramatic performance. <laughs> and he loved to watch theater as well. No wonder he was an enthusiastic supporter and director of the Cleveland Playhouse who wanted to see the best future for the organization. My father would know the struggles, some of which David has alluded to, 
and the triumphs of the Cleveland Playhouse, and he would very much approve of it at 100, as do I. Thank you.